I'm Tanya and this is what you get in one of my medieval embroidery kits. I say that I do medieval embroidery in a medieval way. So when I do a kit, it's using medieval colours and the right materials and the right stitches. It's not just any old medieval image which I've taken and done in a modern embroidery style. So you get your booklet with all your embroidery stitches in. And because I hand dye all my threads, you also get a personalised colour key. So this one is this kit here, the Bad Wabbits, but with purple and pink bunnies. You also get your needle, you get your naturally dyed threads, and your canvas is all marked out with your design so that all you have to do is follow it. So I'll show you some of my designs as well. So this one is, this is three bad cats. This one is my partner's cat, Mr. Trouble, who's a Bengal. That's my cat, who is a Maine Coon and his name is Branston. And that's Mr. Klaus from next door, because Klaus likes a mouse, you see. Oh, and there's my cat, Branston. He's not really all that blue, as you can see, but he is a big lump. And then we've got some other ones here. We've got Freya, the little Viking girl, who is based on a pendant of a Valkyrie from Sweden. We've got the hounds based on a 13th century manuscript design, and that's available in several colourways. Most of them are. This is... Uh, like things from the Luttrell Psalter. I have a slight obsession with the Luttrell Psalter. Uh, I like these two because they look like they're having a bit of a discussion. Squirrel Girl is also from the Luttrell Psalter. She's a slightly more advanced one because she has more com complicated hands and face. Spinster and the Warrior, which were done as a pair, also from the Luttrell Psalter. Um, they're strange little beasties with animals' legs. I also do a fair few Rudy kits because medieval people had a pretty bawdy sense of humour. And these two here are based on pilgrim badges of all things. I think they were skipped pilgrim badges where, you know, you'd just been to a brothel. But here we have uh, the vulva with her travelling hat and her very stylish travelling uh, stick. And... Uh, the vulva crowned and borne aloft by penises in attendance, which is a, a lovely one. Someone did that the other week and they said that they'd shown it to the 18-year-old grandson who'd been absolutely horrified by it, only to find the next week that his mum was doing the other one. We've got uh, a medieval elephant from a 13th century illustration, which is quite a complicated one because you've got uh, not only a stripy monkey riding the elephant but you've got some trellis couching as well which makes it a slightly more fun and complicated kit. The biggest one that I do, the most expensive one in laid and couch work is the unicorn kit. He was done when I was doing a Noah's Ark and he's got a, a pocket watch which is optional because I, I like the idea that the unicorns didn't make it, they became extinct because they missed the ark. We've got the bad bunnies, who we've already seen. Oh, this is another naughty one. This is the penis-picking nun. The, the legend is, this is actually from a magic book, that uh, they genuinely believed that witches could steal a man's penis and they would store them in uh, trees. They could then be retrieved by virtuous maidens. Hence, there's more than one illustration of a medieval nun retrieving penises from a tree. We've also got a lovely Christmas dragon who is my original design done with several different medieval stitches. So he's got some German brickwork as well as the laid and couched work and he's got some trellis couching to give his lovely scales. And then he's also got um, some convent stitch for the ribbons here to give that lovely silky texture. And he uses some gilded leather strips for a bit of glitter and sparkle, which was used quite commonly in um, medieval appliques. 
and the bad bunnies we've already seen. On July the 6th, I've got uh, a book coming out on Opus Anglicanum embroidery. I think some people wonder why I use the name Opus Anglicanum. It means English work and it's the high church embroidery of the Middle Ages. This is just the author's advanced copy. I've only got the one at the moment, but I shall be getting a delivery. It's designed as a course. So if you start at the very beginning, we've got a breakdown of how to work hands and faces, where there's a small face and a larger face worked side by side so that you've got the enhanced blown up stitches alongside what they ought to look like. And then the projects get more and more complicated as you go through the book. Some of them are quite large and involved projects. They're mostly based on original designs. So this one is a cherub from one of the corps, but he looks a little lopsided because I, I used him as a sampler. So he's got many, many different styles of wings on him. Uh, six different styles, in fact, because there wasn't enough room in the book to do six different angels with six different wings. There's the odd original design as well. My personal favourite is the Grim Reaper here, who's based on a medieval image, but then they don't normally have scythes in medieval images. And I use some coloured passing on him as well. We've got uh, the Three Kings, which is the one on the, the cover, which is, I'm fascinated still by the green horse. We've got uh, an image from the Pienza cult, which I adapted to show the fairy tale of Rapunzel and then another one which uh, illustrates Rumpelstiltskin so she's sitting there spinning. There are versions of most fairy tales from all over the world. There's a Persian version, hence the peacock, which is a very important symbol in Persian literature. I'm particularly pleased with the peacock. I think he looks wonderful. And then going through the book, we finish off with a very silly project. I've used an image from a document called the Codex Maness and done a little medieval lady taking a selfie. So I'll show you some of the originals of those as well because they're all around my studio, which is a complete mess at the moment, as studios normally are. So there's the kings. We've got uh, little St. Lawrence here among the bookshelves. We've got the angel with all his lovely wings and St. Michael and the Dragon uh, from the Scion Corp. So that's some of my work, and I do have some Opus Anglicanum kits on my blog as well. Oh, Selfie Girl is hiding behind the plan for my new studio. She's just lurking back there. So if you go to my website, which is Opus Anglicanum at WordPress, you can link to the shop from there, 